athletes will perform exercise and their heart muscle gets bigger because it's pumping harder. It's pumping faster. We're on our way out to uh, Columbus, Ohio, coming up to the Arnold Classic. And, um, you know, we're in the bodybuilding space and we're in the powerlifting space. And unfortunately, we've had a lot of friends and a lot of people that we know that are close to us die in the last maybe two years. I think there's been, uh, I guess, I don't even know how many people. It's probably like 10 now. Uh, the most recent guy um, being a guy named Boston Lloyd, who's a big uh, YouTuber and influencer. Um, I think he was only 29 years old. He was 29. 29. Something wow, like that. Wow. Um, uh, obviously, a lot of these uh, athletes have utilized performance-enhancing drugs. Um, not speculating necessarily on what they did. Um, what do you think is the role of performance-enhancing drugs potentially on the heart or just on the human body in general? And, and what do you think it could be doing uh, negatively uh, mm. to, you know, to get us into this position where we're uh, losing so many people? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, when we talk about, if we just focus it on testosterone, for example, um, testosterone is a really important hormone in the body. It's, it's a steroid hormone. Uh, it's produced once we hit, as, as males, <clears throat> once we hit puberty in the testes, we start to produce higher levels of testosterone. Now, it's starting to storm here, so I don't know if you can hear all the rain and the thunder, <laughs> so I just apologize for that. Um, so the testosterone that's made, you hit puberty, that testosterone plays a really important role in developing our secondary male sexual characteristics, which includes things like increased muscle size, increased bone growth, um, wider jaw set, more prominent Adam's apple, what we call a laryngeal prominence, um, hair distribution, fat distribution, so... It re- Less fat around the body, so testosterone breaks tends to break fat down, promotes lipolysis, fat breakdown, and but redistributes it elsewhere. And so these are all the important roles that testosterone plays early on in life. Mm. Now, as you get older, if somebody decides to supplement with testosterone for whatever, and I'm not going to speculate on what reasons they are, but if somebody wants to take testosterone as a supplement um, or a replacement therapy or whatever it may be, there's going to be... Um, exaggerations of those characteristics we just stated. So bone growth, muscle protein synthesis, so so muscle growth, um, exaggerations of the jaw set and of the uh, laryngeal prominence and and, and hair changes and body fat changes. Hairy back. (laughs) Hairy back. And and, and (laughs) the the thing is when it comes to hormones is that, again, go back to homeostasis, the happy, healthy balance. Your body always wants to maintain a range. There's the upper limits and lower limits. And the same goes with testosterone, just like any other hormone of the body. If you start to take what we call exogenous testosterone, so from outside the body in, your endogenous testosterone drops down a little bit because it's saying, oh, the testosterone levels are already high. I don't need to produce my own. And so that drops down. And so, hence, some gonadal, gonadal issues associated with lower endogenous testosterone. So, chronically elevated and long-term, it can play a role with sperm, for example, because testosterone is important for sperm differentiation and maturation. But the other things happen when it comes to too much testosterone and the muscle synthesis side of things. So, I told you earlier on there's three pumps of muscle. Skeletal muscle attached to the bone, and that's what we use for weight training. Smooth muscle inside of our hollow organs, like digestive tract, blood vessels, um, uh, reproductive system, and so forth. But then you've got your cardiac muscle, your heart muscle. Testosterone stimulates your heart muscle to synthesize proteins similarly as it does to your skeletal muscle proteins. And now, again, homeostasis, your heart is a muscle. And so athletes will perform exercise and their heart muscle gets bigger. Because it's pumping harder, it's pumping faster, and its response, just like when you go to the gym and do bicep curls, is to get bigger so that it is more efficient at pumping harder and pumping faster. And so an athlete's heart is bigger, and that's fine. That actually means they have a lower resting heart rate. Um, when, they, when the heart gets too big, though, and this includes athletes as well, so this can be an athlete who's not on testosterone, but an athlete's heart can get too big and then it fails. And this is one of the reasons why you get athletes dying at earlier ages is because of heart failure because their heart has grown too big. Now, it's not just the size 
But when a muscle like the heart gets too big, it itself requires oxygen and nutrients. And so the demand for it to get nutrients and oxygen goes up. Mm. And that then can become difficult to supply that to the heart, especially if the diet's not great and some of the blood vessels are occluded or blocked, which is what occlusion means. Um, but if you've got the chambers inside the heart, right? And that's where the blood goes in. And when the heart contracts, it squeezes those chambers, just like squeezing a tube of toothpaste and the blood squirts out. But if the heart muscle gets bigger, it actually makes those chambers smaller. And then the heart hits this point. It goes over the threshold where it becomes really efficient to being really poor at doing its job. And so then heart failure occurs. And this is where the heart no longer works as a pump. And so that can happen with athletes, not on testosterone, but it can also happen on athletes who are on testosterone because of the uh, increased likelihood to develop a thicker heart or thicker heart muscle. Hey, I know you're enjoying this episode, but listen up. We've partnered with Merrick Health. They're a telehealth network owned by Derek for more plates, more dates. But literally, the amazing thing about Merrick Health and getting your labs done with them is that when you get your labs done, you work with a client care coordinator that goes over your labs and gives you specific supplementation or nutrition protocols or potentially hormonal protocols for your levels. The problem with a lot of these other telehealth networks is that when they do these things, they give everybody the same exact things, which actually can hurt you long-term more than help you. Andrew, how can they get it? Yes, that's over at MerrickHealth.com. That's M-A-R-E-K Health.com. And if you already know what labs you want to get at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT10 to save 10% off all of those labs. If you don't know where to start, head over to MerrickHealth.com slash POWERPROJECT. And you guys will get directed straight to the Power Project panel that has 26 different labs that will cover everything you need. And at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT to save $101 off of that panel. Again, MerrickHealth.com, links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. So, and, and you can kind of stretch the heart too, is my understanding, right? With some types of activity like a zone two uh, cardiovascular training, the mat, the methadone method, or I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but um, I believe there's uh, like a lot of runners and a lot of uh, people that do endurance and stamina type things. Um, they utilize that method to help stretch the heart, which in my my understanding is that that's actually fairly healthy because now you have a, uh, a more fluid heart that can kind of handle uh, these larger um, uh, these larger needs for, for, for more energy, for more blood pumping through the body and those kinds of things, right? Yeah. So the heart has this wonderful capacity to, if you increase the volume of blood that goes into the heart, just like a balloon, it stretches. Now, there's this thing called the Frank Starling mechanism where the greater you stretch the heart, the greater its responsive contraction is. Mm. And so if you can do certain types of training where you increase the venous return or volume return into the heart, it stretches it more and it reflexively contracts better and pumps more efficiently. And that's that process that you're referring to. Increased blood volume return, increased stretching, increased snapping back, and then more blood gets ejected, and that's a more efficient heart pump. So what are some general practices that athletes who do use to choose to use performance-enhancing drugs and athletes that don't, but what are some general practices where that, that they can make sure to do to just make sure that they keep their heart healthy? Uh, and this includes individuals that are like powerlifters who typically don't do much cardio or even bodybuilders or people that strength train. What should they be doing on the outside to make sure that that stays healthy? I think if anyone has decided to supplement um, with anything really, uh, they should constantly get themselves checked. So this can include blood work, mm. seeing their physician, getting their you know heart health, or all, all the other you know blood pressure done, all those types of things. And doing that consistently will then allow you to hopefully check, find anything that may pop up early. And obviously, any time you start to change around the body's levels of things. The body will respond reflexively. If you bring something up too high, it's going to try and bring things back down low. If things are too low, it's going to try and bring things back up higher. And so that's why when supplementing with things, you've got to be very careful. You know, I mean, per personally, I wouldn't supplement with anything unless I'm deficient in it. And so I always go, my GP is a good friend of mine. I, every six months, get my bloods done, get myself checked up and just say, 
What's the go? And if I'm all good and everything's within the range, I don't take anything apart from protein powder, for example. Um, so, I'm sorry. Can I interrupt for just a second? What do you get yeah. checked usually? Because I think that's important for maybe some people listening. What do you get checked? Yeah, full bloods. So full bloods uh, is just the general term for them checking red blood cells, white blood cells, uh, electrolytes, uh, and then certain enzymes, enzymes involved with the liver, enzymes involved with the heart, enzymes involved for inflammation and so forth. And so that's, and it's like two pages worth of mm-hmm. information that, that spits out. And it's all about the range. So they, they want it to be sitting nicely within that range. Too high, we've got to intervene. Too low, we're going to intervene. So now, that intervention may be avoiding something or it may right, be taking something. For example, yeah. like if you um, saw that your liver was off or something, then you might take a supplement that may assist with the liver. If you saw your electrolytes are off, maybe you'll supplement some magnesium for a little while or something like that. Potentially, depending on what it is, right. obviously. Right. you know, some, some of the liver enzymes give you an indication that your in, liver is in, inflamed um, or may be obstructed in one, of the, in one of the tubes, like from the gallbladder going down to the, to the um, intestines. And so that, that may tell you, the, the intervention may be surgical, for example. It may mm. be I need to get a, a stone taken out of my gallbladder. But mm. yes, it, it really depends on what those levels are. And that's where you really need a good physician to be able to just have a chat about if things are out of whack, what may that mean? And it may mean you need to go do some more tests. So it may mean, hey, let's now go do an echocardiogram and check your heart out. Or let's go do a stress test and see how your heart responds when you jump on a treadmill, for example. And, and so... You know, always getting yourself checked regularly in as many different ways as possible is just a great way of spotting anything early. Hey, little mama, let me whisper in your ear, like, comment, subscribe to the channel because we continue to bring you peak content on this channel. Obviously, you guys are here. You guys have watched the whole video. So like, comment, subscribe. All right. See you later.